Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to update you on what's going on with this Arctic blast because it's still a huge Arctic blast coming in with some very cold temperatures, guys. going to bring 20s all the way towards the south side of the U.S. Now, we still have these storms that's going on. We still have all this snowfall. But a lot of people is going to be talking about this. I want to contribute somewhere where it really would help because this is going to be all over the place. So what I'm going to talk about is how we have this strong Arctic blast coming on down. And you can see the below average temperatures, how far this is actually going all the way into Florida, guys. Now, this is actually going to block what is going to be forming in our next area to watch. Our next area to watch is going to be in this region right here. We already have one right here, and this is for the piece that's breaking off of Tammy, and it's going to be an upper level low traveling down. But what's brewing up is really strong, guys, so I need to give you the latest updates, not only for the cold temperatures, also for what's going on in the tropics. So you've never been here before, make sure you do subscribe. I am all year long. It is free to do. Also, make sure to support the channel, guys. Hit the like button, share the video on the other platforms. Let people know this information so they can prepare for what's going on with this. Because we've been talking about this here a month. Some people still are just now finding out about this. So remember, always to save you time, time chance will be in the description below. That way you can go to whichever part you want to see. Now let's get into your weather forecast. Now, so far, National Hurricane Center don't have anything out for the next seven days, but they will. Now you can see the update on global tropics. They're still expecting tropical cyclone formation in this region all the way from the 1st through the 7th of November. And it gets stronger for this week. As you go on the next week for the 8th through the 14th, still in the same region, but it gets a lot weaker of a chance as we go towards the end of our hurricane season but i'm showing that right after this is going to ramp right back up just one more time before we finish this year so talking about all the factors you can see with the sea surface temperatures very warm section right here still well above average temperatures and you can see how it's cooling off right along the gulf coast from these cold fronts that's what they do but everything else is still very warm right here still very above average temperatures still sitting in the caribbean plus the latest update on your deep ocean heat content you can see that here that as soon as a storm comes across starts strengthening up starts upwelling the temperatures below in the ocean you can see they're very warm temperatures right in this section right here right where we're expecting formation so with all the factors you can see the best place to get a strong surface low pressure is going to be in this region guys and this is the latest update for today and i am showing a lot of strength matter of fact canadian been showing a lot of growth right here for quite some time another factor we have is our wind shear our vertical wind shear in the caribbean right now is well below average guys you also see it has gotten stronger in four to five days chance for something to form up in the caribbean and unfortunately going right towards jamaica right towards Cuba in six days going towards Bahamas getting pushed away by that cold front and losing his chance and it's a very narrow window we also got this very cool air that is coming down you can see this with AO your Arctic oscillation and you can see with the euro in the blue and the GFS in the red that next dip of very cold air coming in beginning of November is going to be very cold guys going well deep into the Gulf of Mexico. Been reporting about this for over a month now. I know a lot of people are prepared, so if you're new to this channel, you need to prepare for these temperatures. At the same time, this cold front, you can see right here in this high pressure, coming down with this growth in the Caribbean. This is a Canadian model. It's been showing this for a long time. It does come all the way down towards Texas by the time you go to the beginning of November, bringing very cold temperatures, guys. I will go through that. Remember, timestamps is in the description below. Why you get the formation in the Caribbean, and the trend has been that it gets blocked by this high pressure, by this cold front as it swings over it. And this gives it enough time to sit here and strengthen for quite some time, guys. So either it sits there and strengthens and heads north or the high pressure still, like I told you yesterday, goes to the east and this continues to go possibly to the west. Now, we still don't know how this setup is going to be because it's still too far to be sure, but we do know that this has been trending like crazy, especially with GFS and Canadian. GFS takes it where it gets very strong right in the area where you have a lot of deep ocean heat content. We still have our strong sea surface temperatures, low wind shear in our Caribbean, and it takes it all the way to a potential Cat 4, Cat 5 major hurricane, guys, while it swings out to the east while we go towards the 10th. The 7th through the 10th of November, a little bit later, which makes a little bit more sense because the euro is showing the strength really will be around the middle of November, not the beginning of November. 
Also trending on the update this morning, the Sigzi still showing a very strong hurricane going in the same direction. A little bit of a stall there, then goes a little bit further into the U.S. And that is what the GFS has been trending. And it has it strengthening all the way down to a 923 millibars. A very strong storm possibly forming in the Caribbean. We need to take this serious. The potential wind still showing it be east side loaded. Not much would be for Florida. But so far on this track, it would just be devastating on anything that that would happen if that were to grow at that much strength. At the same time, you see right here on your precipital water where you have all your heavy precipitation. You have your dry atmosphere from your cold front. And you see how it forms up. And there's a lot of precipitation coming through the Caribbean if that were to happen. And you can see as it comes across through the southeast, that it starts getting hit with that cold front, guys. And that is the latest update that it does get hit eventually with that cold front. Now, when we look at the 6 z which was the latest run that we have, it looks like the cold front comes a little bit later, gets a little stall, high pressure goes over the top of it, stalls it right there, but still makes it in afterwards. So we still need to watch this because this could potentially grow by November 3rd and 4th becoming a strong hurricane going through the Caribbean, definitely going to affect Jamaica if that were to happen. They right next to the eye wall on the north and eastern side as that travels to the west, getting a very strong surface low down to a 922, guys. That is powerful. Now let's go through what the Euro sees and we'll go through some ensembles to see what is showing the trend. You see, the Euro shows it just be a group of disorganized thunderstorms still Maybe by the southeast, start growing up by the end of October, beginning of November, be forming something in the northeast, maybe becoming a snowstorm for the northeast. And so far, if that were to happen, according to the Euro, that is bringing major snowfall to the intercoastal northeast so far, just because it would be too warm, be too close to the coast. Still too far to take seriously. So as we take a look at the possibilities, you can see in 72 hours with the Euro, that it does grow its chances as it passes by Jamaica over Cuba. Then it gets, starts getting the strong chances to go by Bahamas and start strengthening up as it hopefully pulls away and don't affect nobody we do need to watch out for bahamas if that were to play true now let's look at the control members the control member of the euro shows that it will be is what we see this morning in six days a group of disorganized thunderstorms and start strengthening up towards the northeast as we go towards november 1st and november 2nd bringing that potential snowstorm now when you look at the control member of the gfs you can see it takes all the way to november 3rd and november 4th all the way to november 7th and 8th before this starts forming up in all of these ensembles. Once again, this is the one that you want to go by. This is a control member. This is your more than likely outcome. Showing it to be an upper level low by November 3rd. But start strengthening from that favorable environment and that deep ocean heat content. Time you go through the 5th and the 6th. Then still going around and going right by Cuba towards Bahamas. And you see that a piece actually breaks off like what the Euro sees. That it starts growing up late. And then that goes towards the northeast. But GFS still leaves that piece in the Caribbean. And then the high pressure blocks it on down. So we still got to wait. We still don't know what is the outcome. A lot of these outcomes is showing a very bad system growing in the Caribbean, guys. And if that was to form, the next name on the list will be Vince. After that, will be Whitney. Now, we'll keep you updated so far with your potential velocity anomaly with the Euro for unfavorable environment favorable environment a lot of lift in the atmosphere you can see right here for the very beginning of november euro has it for very low chance for having a very strong system also right here you can see that it shows it actually is being from the 15th through the 20th with the euro when we start getting our next strong anomaly chance so remember our pattern that we're normally going into is it forms in our western caribbean and curves around by the bahamas going out to atlantic kind of like how alex was just becoming a weak system now, when you go by GFS, GFS is showing this very strong potential CAT 4, CAT 5. But when you look in the potential velocity anomaly, according to the GFS, it's not showing 
cat 4 cat 5 strength on here matter of fact as i waited for the update look how much it has downgraded again for favorable environment in the beginning of november now these storms are going to go all day long still going through up and west you still got this big snowstorm all the way for tomorrow as well but then it's going to start clearing out for tomorrow there's not a lot going on it's just going to be this cold temperatures coming on down but it's still going to bring your flooding so you can see right here with the euro as you go for almost five days still brings a good bit of rainfall still to come Still showing another four to seven inches, possibly for Western Arkansas, Eastern Oklahoma, Northern Texas. See, DFW got hit real good. Texas got a lot of rainfall. Can't wait to see y'all next drought monitoring update. That way I can see what it looks like. A lot of people got rainfall or is getting rainfall where this is needed. And it is going east over the Ohio Valley, just like I was talking about the other day. Over Michigan, over Pennsylvania, New York and some of new england as well but let's talk about these temperatures and these wind chills that are coming all the way to the south this is going to be extreme cold i hope y'all are really ready for what's coming and remember you can see here on your arctic oscillation that this cold air is going to get colder and colder as we go towards the beginning of november and for the rest of november it won't be this cold again guys so you can see the latest update from october 28th through november 1st this is where they are expecting some hazardous cold coming on through. This is going to be 20s, teens, single digits, negative wind chills, very cold air. Plus, they are expecting a frost or freeze advisories to come out in all of this pink section just for those little three days. And remember, Euro takes this system where it goes up to southeast. Then it starts forming up and becomes a possible nor'easter as you go through Wednesday next week guys first and the second wednesday and thursday so as i walk you through this real quick here's your temperatures for sunday morning guys you got a lot of 20s moving on through like they said it's going to be some hazardous temperatures you got a lot of single digits and some negative temperatures going through to higher elevations you're still going to be in the 70s and the 60s in the south the wind chills is still going to be the worst part still bringing in single digits negative 15 to negative 20 something degree wind chills passing through you're gonna feel like you're in the 20s and it is gonna warm right back up where your highs for the day is gonna be in the 20s a lot of people are gonna stay in the 30s and 40s in the central plains the south and the southeast is still gonna stay in the 70s and 80s as you go through monday here comes your temperatures coming right on through very cold temperatures this is not your wind chills still bringing in the 20s going further to the south with the wind chills going even further with it feels like 20 degree temperatures. Now you got a lot of teens and still negative 20 some degree wind chills passing through. Now it's starting to go further and further. Your highs are only going to be in the 40s for the South Central, still for the Ohio Valley, still 30s and 40s. Southeast is still warmed up to the 80s. As you go through Tuesday, this is October 31st. Cold air coming even further. Now you're in the 40s in the south. You're in the 20s Ohio Valley now where everyone's still in the single digits, negative temperatures, 20s. It's just going further and further. And with the wind chills, it's getting worse, guys. Now you're still bringing this in from the upper Midwest. Once again, a big area for negative wind chills while it's starting to get even colder all the way towards the south. It will warm right back up for October 31st. You will still be in the 50s in the South Central. You're still going to be warm over the Southeast, but it's not done yet. As you go through November 1st, cold air is coming even further across. Now you're waking up with freezing temperatures, 20s, going all the way towards Texas, guys. The northern side of the Deep South, November 1st. And look at these wind chills. All y'all are going to be feeling this come the very beginning of November. This is some very cold air coming down, especially for the south. Now, it will warm right back up for November 1st, and the only warm spot left will be in Florida. Panhandle, your highs will be maybe 60. So it is going to be a very cold Arctic blast, and for the second as well, this is going to linger around. Now, the Panhandle of Florida is in the 40s in the morning, so now you got to watch out for the fallen iguanas. And with the wind chills, Look what you're feeling coming in on November 2nd. This is going to last for a few days, guys. The whole country is going to be pulled in these temperatures. 
Now, November 2nd for your highs, you're still going to be in the 50s for the south. You still got some warmth left in Florida, but not much is starting to get pulled away. November 3rd comes right back down again, and the wind chills comes right back down again. Thank you again for your time, everybody. I hope this has helped you understand what is going on and what is expected out of the coming days. I will keep you updated. Make sure you do click that bell. Now, before we go, I want to talk to you with Psalm 78. 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Have a great day, <laughs> everybody.